Hello everyone, this is Will back from Apple One to One Training and today we're going to talk about iCloud and not iCloud on your devices. We're talking about on the web. There is a web version of iCloud and it allows you to do a few things. More importantly, one of the biggest features that you're going to need to use this for is that if you lost one of your devices and you need to access or find it and you don't have another device on you, you can go on any web browser and take a look at it. But there are other things you could do, including accessing all your photos, including all your documents, your files everything that you do iCloud related or, or have turned on is here uh, we really do appreciate everyone subscribing to our account and we're going to go through more training episodes so please let us know what you like we're going to sign into iCloud and uh, we're going to blur a lot of things here because obviously I'm using a personal account so because I'm on a device that already has I have access to I'm going to use my touch ID and that allows me to sign into my account and then it will just let me right in. We're gonna do something a little differently. What if you're on a browser that you're not on? So I switched over to Google Chrome. I'm gonna sign in on Google Chrome. It's a little bit different than the Touch ID feature. So I'm gonna log in. And when I do that, now it's telling me, yay, your device is being logged in from somewhere. Now also on my iPhone, this is happening as well. But I wanna move this to the side because one of the major features that a lot of people would log into iCloud.com for is this right here called Find Devices. If you are missing your device and you wanna sign in, what if you didn't have your device on you? Well, you have to be able to access the web because if you're trying to look for it, you need to use Find My. So you could skip this completely and go right to Find My Devices. And what that's doing now, I'm going to hit don't allow right now, hit don't change. But what it's doing is that now I can go through and find any of my devices that I'm looking for. So I would just start going through and looking for devices that are that's missing. So right now it's starting to go through and here are my AirPods, here's my iPad Air. There are things that are completely missing that I need to locate on here. And as you scroll down the list, you can see not only your devices, but also your family's devices as well, including your family. So there's a lot on here. So you can just click on something. So we're gonna use my Apple Watch. I have my watch here on me. And now what can I do? Well, I could play a sound, and then a sound will play, and now it's happening on my watch as we talk. Obviously, I'm on, I'm on the device right now. But also, we have Lost Watch. And what this does is it puts it into lost mode. And then what it does, you can add a phone number and a message to that device. And that way it does that. And also you can erase it. So if you want to be able to locate devices, you don't necessarily need the two-factor authentication to log in. Just go ahead and do the find devices feature on there. All right, we are signed in to iCloud.com. This is the page you will see when you log in. This is kind of the interface of it. Uh, as you look around, you can see there's like tiles representing photos, mail, drive, and notes. That's what's set up right now, including your name up here and your information. But what we're going to do first is we're going to customize. So on the bottom, I can actually decide what tiles want to be where. So for number one is what do I not want to see? Well, I don't really care about seeing my mail. I don't really go on the iCloud well to see that. So I'm just going to minus that. And what it's going to do is it removes the title but not the data. That's gone. Now everything kind of adjusts itself. I can go to the top here and we have a couple of things we can do. One is we could change the background color. So if I want to have a red background, I could do that. I could have an orange background. And then I could add a tile. So what tile do I want to add? What things can I do on here? Well, there are just basic apps in here, uh, but you can also add other apps. So for right now, we're just going to add the calendar. And calendar now is now added here as an option. And then under the dots, you could decide what items specifically in the calendar that you want to see on here. And then, of course, I can adjust things around. So if I want my drive to be, let's see here, let's see. I want to go to the drive here, and I want to say, what are my favorites here? Well, I want to go to my documents folder. I want that to be like the main folder instead of recents. But you can also just check off whatever one you want. Also with Drive is that, hey, I can have two different drives. So right now I have a Recents and I have a Documents. So I can actually have two different tiles that represent two different things. So I'm going to move things around just to make it fit. Now I'm, I'm a little, I guess I'm a little stuck here, but they're putting like, oh, there we go. And then there we go. So I have a Documents now and I have a Recents. So I can actually have the same app twice depending on what I want to look for. And then I hit Done. And that's how the tile stays on here. So really easy just to go through and customize and, and change things around. 
So under apps, what I'm going to do is open up pages as an example. So if I want to be able to do like Google Drive and I want to do pages, so this is probably one of my first times opening this up. And then I can go through all my documents in the recents. I can browse through everything in here. I can go to my downloads. These are downloads from phone that I did. And then I have my favorite folders. So here are my favorites. So if I want to go through all that, I can go here and actually open these documents up. So let's go to recents. And I'm going to open up my open up my brochure for Disney. Now, what's very important about this, by the way, when you're doing pages on here, is that some things could change based on fonts and all that. So one thing you want to make sure is that if you're going to work on a document online, that when you go to the Pages app, it could look different. Uh, I can tell you right now, like text is off here. That's a perfect example of that. Pretty much everything else is right, but there are some text issues here. And then I'm going to go back, and on the top right corner up here is the item that lets you go to the, all the different apps. So let's go to Numbers, and we're going to go to my Disney budget. It's a very simple budget, by the way. I know a lot of people like to see more number stuff. I didn't want to make a whole episode on this. Uh, also, it's actually telling me what's new in Numbers, so I probably haven't been using that. But this just shows you like my budget that I did for Disney. It's very quick, very easy. Uh, but that's really it. So if you have to go online, you want to be able to do this, you can. A lot of the features that you have are here. All the basics are up here. On the top right corner, my name is up here. Let's go to Home. It takes you back to the main page. You can go to your notes. It's telling me what I could do in here as a brand new feature. I can pin notes in here, which wasn't obviously an feature before. So I have my shopping list right here that I can go through. I have all my tags here that I use. And that's pretty much what this is all about. It's really just adding more notes online if you have to do that. Photos. You can go up here and actually edit photos around. So if there are things you don't need, like these are duplicates. I, already, I don't need these. So I'm just going to, this is for Mother's Day. So I can actually go through and delete up here. It will change on my phone. So, uh, yeah, so these are just photos I took over the weekend. If there's things I just don't need, I can get rid of that. Just celebrated my 40th birthday up here. And also you could go through your personal and your shared library as well. With iCloud Plus, you do have the invites up here. So if you have to go through your invites and you wanted to do uh, stuff about your invite, you have a guest list, all the things that we talked about. We do have a previous episode that talks how to make one of these. So let's talk about one of the things that you can do up here that you really can't do on much, much, many other devices, and that is to send and receive mail using your own domain. So if you have a domain that you own, you can actually create an email address that sends your mail directly to the iCloud email address. Now, I have a Mac.com. That's what it used to be back in the day. But if you have an iCloud email address, one of the iCloud Plus features that you have is that you could do your domain. So my domain here, WVS Productions, is here. And I am the owner of that domain. And then I can actually allow, so I have my email address here at will at wfvsproductions.com. So I can actually put that directly on my domain site and get emails from here. So my email address will be hidden uh, for that. So if people are contacting me through my business website, and I don't want to create a whole new email address. That's what the whole point of this is, is that I can actually have it go right to my Mac mail without sharing it out. So that's a feature that you have built in here. So how my email keeps personal email addresses private by creating unique random email addresses to forward to your inbox. So whenever you sign up for an app, you have a feature that you can actually hide your email address so they don't have the real thing. So like I had that for Flickr, I had that for Hopper, and these are just fake email addresses and they can forward it to my emails down here which are kind of blurred out. So that's an example where you can hide your email address and you can create that right here. If you hit the plus sign, what it's gonna do is it's creating a fake email address and then you can label it for what reason you're doing that for. So if you're on a website, let's say you're on Amazon.com, you don't want Amazon to have your real email address, but you want to use this fake email address, you could do that. And then you can always refresh the email address. So you see it's creating random email addresses, and you can make a note about that. So this is, again, a feature online that you really don't, you can do on the app, but this is much easier on, I think, on this item. Up to the top right corner, we're seeing the apps up here. Down here at the bottom is called Data Recovery. So Data Recovery is allowing you to recover files deleted from both your iCloud Drive and apps within the last 30 days. So you can look up files, bookmarks, contacts, and calendar items. So if there are things that you did remove from iCloud, you do have the ability to do data recovery on the site. 
I'm going to go to iCloud Drive, and now this is the actual drive that's available. So think of it like your Finder, but maybe a poor version of it. So on the left side, I have all my favorites right here, and then I have all the items including Recents, Browse, Shared, and Recently Deleted. Right now I have this in a list format, but I can also go to a grid format if I want to do that. And if I don't want something that I don't need to keep, I'm just going to go right here. I'm just going to hit Delete, and it goes away. If I need to share this out, I can do that. I can collaborate with others. And then I can share this out to there and send a link to everybody. On the top here, there is an upload button. So if I want to upload files directly to iCloud Drive, I can. So if I'm on someone else's computer and I need to upload these files and I want it directly here, if you don't have AirDrop or anything like that, of course, AirDrop is a very popular item where you don't have to necessarily use that. You can do upload, but you can also download. So if I can click on something on here, I can click on it and then download a file. I can duplicate it. I could do more information, preview it, open it up. So there are things you could do on iCloud Drive here. Little, uh, It's definitely not as intuitive as Dropbox, I will say that. Trust me, I don't, I don't think I can compare Dropbox to iCloud as far as some of the features they can do. But I use iCloud on a regular basis. It's, it's basically where everything is saved. So you can click on a file, go to the Collaborate feature. You can share your spreadsheet via email. You can copy a link. You can email it to those people and send it out. You can double click on a file, open it up, especially this one. This one's a keynote. Let's go back to the home screen. All right. And that's really the idea of what this app can do. So it's a web version that allows you to locate your, find your, find my devices, which I think is probably the biggest reason. You failed, that is not cool. That is one of the main reasons I would go up here is that if you lost an item, you can go on iCloud.com on anybody's device and you can actually log in and try to find your devices, but you have access to your calendar, your drive, your photos, your notes, anything that's iCloud related is up here to use. And there are some unique features in up here. If you click on the head, there are a, some unique features up here, including your custom domain name and hide your email if you want to access those features. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments. And I appreciate everyone watching our content and I love every single one of you.